even though on paper it may look like cyclodecapentaene is aromatic, it is in fact a non-aromatic compound because it fails to pass our fourth test. Hey everybody, Professor Davis here from ChemSurvival.com, YouTube channel ChemSurvival. And today I want to talk to you a little bit about aromaticity, especially aromaticity of hydrocarbons. And one problem that actually tripped me up very early in my YouTube career that I want to correct today. Now, the question I want to answer today is this, uh, is cyclodecapentaene an aromatic compound? Uh, because uh, it, it passes a lot of the tests that it needs to be aromatic. However, when we look closely, what we're going to discover is that there's one very important caveat. So before we get into that, let's just think about how do we determine whether or not a hydrocarbon is aromatic. So no heteroatoms here. We're not considering whether something's non-aromatic or anti-aromatic. We're just going to ask the fundamental question, is a compound aromatic? Now to figure that out, yes or no answer, we have to come up with the answer to four different questions. Now, the first of those questions is, is the compound cyclic? If it is not cyclic, it cannot be aromatic. All right. The second question, if it is cyclic, is do all of the atoms within that cyclic compound, all the atoms that make up the ring, have at least one available p orbital in order to allow that delocalization to happen that makes something aromatic. And if that's true, is Huckel's rule obeyed? In other words, are there four n plus two pi electrons in the system? Six, 10, 14, and so on. And here's the gotcha sometimes that we forget about. That is, if all these other things are true about a compound, can that ring achieve planarity? Can that ring actually lay flat so that it can create that conjugated pi system and get that extra stability that it craves? Uh, we're going to answer all these questions today for the compound, cyclodecapentaene, specifically the 1, 3, 5, 7, 9 isomer. So let's think about this, these questions one by one. Is the compound cyclic? Well, quite clearly from this representation I've got here. This would be all cis uh, cyclodecapentaene. As you can see here, there is a, con a continuous cyclic structure within that compound. So yes, it is. It passes the first test. Next, we have to ask ourselves this. Um, if it is cyclic, do all of the atoms within that cyclic structure have an available p orbital? And if we take a bit of a closer look at this, we notice, of course, quite quickly that all of these Carbon atoms within the ring are sp2 hybridized and therefore should have an available p orbital. So yes, we pass that test as well. And the third question, is Huckel's rule followed? Remember, there are five double bonds for a total of 10 pi electrons. 10 pi electrons means that we are in that 4n plus 2 group where all of those electrons can find lower energy homes in bonding molecular orbitals when they're delocalized within a ring. Okay, so far, it sure does look to us like this compound is going to be aromatic. But here's the catch. It can't be aromatic if it can't align all of those p orbitals in a ring structure and allow the electrons free run of the resulting pi molecular orbital. So the question at hand here is, can this compound with 10 ring carbons that are sp2 hybridized obtain a flat geometry, a planar geometry? And if we look really closely, what we notice is the interior bond angles of that structure would have to be 144 degrees. And yet we already determined that those ring carbons are sp2 hybridized and should have an optimal interior bond angle of about 120 degrees. And what this means is that this compound can't lay flat. There is too much ring strain associated with obtaining a planar geometry and therefore, this cannot be an aromatic compound. Cyclodecapentaene will, in fact, be a non-aromatic compound. Now, if you're real clever, you might ask yourself this question, well, do all the bonds have to be cis bonds in this molecule? Is it possible that a couple of those double bonds could, in fact, be drawn in the trans conformation in order to achieve a compound that does indeed have 120-degree bond angles among all of its ring carbons? And it looks tempting when you do it in ChemDraw, doesn't it? You can actually create a structure that has those. But in order to, uh, to, to understand why this doesn't happen, we have to look at this molecule in three dimensions. And when we render that molecule out in Chem3D, 
the problem becomes apparent that the two interior hydrogens that are created by this uh, addition of trans geometry into the ring cause a steric clash that prohibits even that ring from achieving a planar conformation. So whether it's all cis or whether we introduce some trans bonds into it, even though on paper it may look like cyclodecapentaene is aromatic, it is in fact a non-aromatic compound because it fails to pass our fourth test. It can't achieve a stable planar geometry. So thanks for watching everybody. I'm Professor Davis from chemsurvival.com and the YouTube channel ChemSurvival. And as always, I'll see you next time.